came from outside the solar system. Right now it's inside uh, the orbit of Jupiter and it's headed for its closest pass to the Sun at the end of October. That's going to be barely inside the orbit of Mars and then it's going to keep going on its way out of the solar system. Something is moving through our solar system and it defies all known laws of physics. The James Webb Space Telescope has confirmed its existence, a visitor from another star, 3I Atlas. But unlike anything we've ever tracked, this object is generating its own heat and broadcasting a structured signal. The question is whether we see unusual activity. And in fact, I tasked my research team at the Galileo project to monitor the sky for any unusual activity because it's possible that if it's a uh, alien probe uh, that in fact it would release uh, some mini probes that will visit the planet. You see, this isn't some rogue comet. The latest telemetry shows it has fired some kind of engine breaking from its natural path. Its new trajectory is aimed at the inner solar system. We thought we were searching for alien life, but it turns out it may have been searching for us. The object that woke up, it's not a rock. The James Webb Space Telescope represents a new era of cosmic exploration, a $10 billion machine designed to capture the faint light of the universe's first stars. Its purpose was to look at the past, but recently it was directed to observe an object very much in our present, 3I Atlas, the third interstellar object ever detected passing through our solar system. The first was Oumuamua, a bizarre cigar-shaped object that tumbled away too quickly to study. The second was Borisov, a more conventional-looking comet from another star. 3I Atlas was supposed to be another flyby, a ghost in the night. But what Webb found was something else entirely. The initial readings were baffling. While most asteroids and comets are cold, reflecting the faint warmth of the distant sun, 3I Atlas was emitting its own thermal energy. Not a lot, just a few degrees above the absolute zero of deep space, but the heat wasn't coming from its surface. It was radiating from a central point deep inside. What many overlooked at first was the pattern. The thermal signature wasn't steady, it was pulsing with a slow, deliberate rhythm. Once every 84.3 minutes. Natural objects don't do that. They just don't. That was the first red flag. Then came the data from Webb's Near Infrared Spectrograph, or NIRSPEC. This instrument is so sensitive it can analyze the chemical composition of an exoplanet's atmosphere from trillions of miles away. When pointed at 3I Atlas, it wasn't looking for an atmosphere but for signs of outgassing, the typical behavior of a comet as solar radiation burns off its ice. It found none. There was no tail, no coma, no dust. But it did find something that made the science team's blood run cold. The light reflecting off the object's surface contained absorption bands of complex metallic alloys. These weren't the simple iron and nickel compounds found in meteorites. The signatures pointed to processed materials, including elements heavier than anything that occurs naturally in such a pure state. It was like finding a stainless steel fork in a pristine, untouched jungle. The thing nobody tells you is that nature can make complex things, but it rarely makes them perfect and pure. This object was, to put it mildly, unnervingly refined. The real shock came just days into the observation period. Astronomers at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory were mapping its trajectory, expecting it to follow a gentle, predictable hyperbola, a path dictated by the sun's immense gravity. For a week, it did just that. Then it deviated. It wasn't a huge change, just a tiny fraction of a degree, but in orbital mechanics, there are no small changes. An object weighing millions of tons doesn't just nudge itself onto a new path. The only explanation was that 3I Atlas had initiated a low thrust maneuver. It had propulsion. Over the next 48 hours, it adjusted its course two more times, each move more precise than the last. Its new path was no longer a simple exit from our solar system. It was now an intercept course, aimed not directly at Earth, but at a point in space that would place it on a parallel orbit, just inside the path of Mars. It was a move that was both impossibly advanced and deeply unsettling. Something aboard 3I Atlas had woken up and it wanted a closer look. The object's size was estimated to be around 3,000 feet long, elongated but not as extreme as Oumuamua. 
Its shape was asymmetrical, almost like a shard of obsidian with unnaturally smooth facets that didn't show the typical pitting and scarring from eons of traveling through interstellar space. It was pristine. This fact, combined with the propulsion, led to one inescapable conclusion. 3i Atlas was not a natural object. It was an artifact, a probe, a ship, or something far stranger. And as this realization settled in, people started looking back at the pulsing heat signature with new eyes. A pulse every 84 minutes. Was it a beacon, an engine cycle, or was it something else? A countdown, perhaps? Or in the wildest theories, was it a heartbeat? The mystery was only getting deeper, but one thing was already clear. Humanity's first confirmed contact with an alien intelligence might not be a radio message, but the arrival of a silent-powered and impossibly ancient machine. But what could this machine want, and why did it wait until now to reveal itself? A message in the molecules. With the world's observatories now frantically tracking 3i Atlas, the European Space Agency decided to use a technique they had perfected for finding life on other worlds, high-resolution spectral decomposition. You see, when light passes through the atmosphere of a planet, molecules like oxygen, methane, and water leave behind a sort of chemical fingerprint. They applied this same logic to the faint emissions coming from 3i Atlas. The team wasn't expecting to find an atmosphere, but they wanted to analyze the molecular residue around the object. What they found was so shocking it was triple-checked for errors. There, in the faint halo of energy surrounding the craft, were the spectral signatures of complex organic molecules. This wasn't just simple methane or carbon. These were long-chain polymers, eerily similar in structure to amino acids and nucleotides, the fundamental building blocks of life as we know it. The object was shedding a faint trail of biological material. This discovery was a bombshell. There are two ways this could be possible. The first is panspermia, the theory that life travels between planets and even stars on asteroids. Maybe 3i Atlas was just a cosmic delivery truck carrying the frozen dormant seeds of life from another system. This was amazing enough, but the second possibility was far more profound. What if the object wasn't just carrying life, but was in some way integrated with it? The organic signatures weren't just on the surface, they seemed to fluctuate in direct response to the object's 84-minute energy pulse. When the heat spiked, the organic readings intensified as if the energy was feeding a biological process. It suggested a symbiotic relationship between machine and life, or perhaps a form of biomechanical engineering so advanced it blurred the line between the two. Believe it or not, some scientists began to float the idea that 3i Atlas could be a living machine. Just as researchers were grappling with this idea, something new happened. 3i Atlas changed its behavior again. The rhythmic energy pulse stopped. The thermal signature flattened, dropping back to the cold of deep space. The emissions of organic molecules ceased. The object went completely dark and silent. It was still moving with the same impossible precision, but it had switched into a kind of stealth mode. The change was so sudden it felt like a reaction. Many people are crazy about the idea that it knew we were watching. By turning our most powerful telescope on it, had we triggered a defense mechanism? Was it now trying to hide? This act of going silent was, in many ways, more terrifying than its active pulsing. An object that announces its presence is one thing. An object that is aware enough to conceal itself is another entirely. It implies a tactical intelligence. It was playing a game of cosmic hide and seek and we had just been made it. The final piece of this chapter's puzzle came from an unexpected place, Earth itself. The South Atlantic anomaly is a region where our planet's magnetic field is weakest, a well-known weak spot. Satellites passing through it are often bombarded with radiation. During the exact window that 3i Atlas went dark, magnetometers in this region registered a series of faint, structured magnetic ripples. These were not from a solar flare or any known terrestrial source. The pulses were artificial and their timing was a perfect match for the trajectory adjustments 3i Atlas had made days earlier. The bottom line is, it was as if the object sent a ripple through space-time that our planet's magnetic field picked up. It wasn't an attack, but a resonance. It suggested a connection, 
that this alien technology was somehow interacting with our world on a fundamental physical level, even from hundreds of millions of miles away. It wasn't just in our solar system, it was now a part of it. If this object can talk to our planet, what else is it capable of? What it left behind. The story of 3i Atlas took another sharp turn when astronomers noticed a secondary object. Trailing about 60 miles behind the main body was a tiny speck which they had initially dismissed as a piece of debris, maybe a small rock that had broken off. But as a precaution, they tasked the Webb telescope to get a closer look. The images that came back ended any debate about whether 3i Atlas was natural. The fragment wasn't a rock. It was a perfectly crafted object. It was a flat, triangular shard, roughly 20 feet across, with razor-sharp edges and a surface so smooth it reflected light with almost zero diffusion. Its angles were precise, its geometry flawless. This was not a product of nature, this was a piece of manufactured technology. Even more bizarre, the shard was completely inert. It emitted no heat, no radiation, nothing. It was colder than the space around it, a perfect black body that absorbed all energy that hit it. It was a piece of impossible matter. Analysis of the shard's composition only deepened the mystery. The metallic alloys were similar to the main body, but they were arranged in a crystalline lattice structure that physicists had only ever theorized about. It was a material engineered at the atomic level designed to be incredibly strong yet unbelievably light. Some theorists suggested it was a piece of the object's hull that had sheared off, but others proposed a far more radical idea. What if it wasn't broken? What if it was deliberately jettisoned? Perhaps it was a marker, a calling card left for us to find, or maybe it was a test, a way to see if we were advanced enough to even notice a small, silent, and perfectly invisible object trailing its parent. If so, we had just passed the test. The shard was evidence, but it was also a message that said, here is a piece of what we can do. Now, what can you do? While one team studied the shard, another was analyzing the rotation of 3i Atlas itself. Most elongated objects in space tumble end over end in a somewhat chaotic way. But 3i Atlas was different. Its rotation was stable, controlled, and most incredibly, it seemed to be broadcasting information. The rotational period wasn't constant. It would spin at one speed for a set duration, then subtly shift to another and another in a repeating sequence. A data scientist, known for being a bit of a maverick, ran the sequence through a pattern recognition algorithm. The result was mind-boggling. The intervals between the rotational shifts corresponded to fundamental mathematical constants. The sequence started with pi, 3.14, followed by the golden ratio, 1.618, and then a long string that encoded prime numbers in binary. It was a cosmic signal, not of sound, but of movement. A language written in the silent waltz of a billion-year-old machine. This mathematical broadcast confirmed that the intelligence behind 3i Atlas was not just advanced, it was academic. It understood the universal language of math. But what was it trying to say? Was it a greeting, a dictionary, or was it something more like a key or a password? The discovery of replicating organic molecules now took on a new, more chilling context. What if the math was the instruction manual and the molecules were the hardware? A new theory began to take hold, one far more ambitious than simple panspermia. This wasn't just about spreading life, it was about directing it. The theory suggested 3i Atlas might be a Genesis probe an ancient device that doesn't just seed barren worlds, but provides the mathematical and biological templates for complex evolution. It was a staggering thought. What if the life on Earth wasn't an accident, but the result of a previous visit? What if this object wasn't just a visitor, but our creator, returning to check on its experiment? And if we are just an experiment, is the experiment now over? For weeks, the global consensus was that 3i Atlas was here for us. Its course correction, its stealth mode, its interaction with our magnetic field, it all pointed to Earth. But the thing is, when you're expecting something, you tend to see signs everywhere. The final, most crucial piece of data came when astronomers performed a final recalculation of its trajectory, now factoring in its strange, non-gravitational movement. The results sent a wave of humility and confusion through the scientific community. 3i Atlas was not heading for Earth. 
It wasn't even heading for Mars. Its trajectory was aimed at the outer solar system. Specifically, it was on a course that would take it on a close flyby of Jupiter, with its path bending it directly toward one of its moons, Europa. And after that, its path would line it up for a potential encounter with Saturn's moon, Enceladus. So is 3i Atlas a creator, a caretaker, or just the first of many to come? Let us know what you think. This story is just beginning. Subscribe for more updates.